hair on my face. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. So for today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some products that I fully intended and planned to pick up, but reviews, review or reviews, multiple put me off for one reason or another. I'm gonna be sharing with you the products, the reviews that I saw and what they said that put me off and how I feel about it now. Do I regret it? I wouldn't have thought so. So first up, let's talk about this Chanel Ombre Blush. Ooh. The thing is, when I first saw the pictures of this blush, it's just like right up my street and I have had great experiences with Chanel blushes. Some of my favorite blushes are Chanel and I love their formula, their original formula, and I love their colors. I love the finish of their blushes. This looked such a pretty, like everyday, neutral, gorgeous shade. Luckily for me, it wasn't available here as quickly and early as it was in the US. So I had time to consider my decision to watch reviews and I watched numerous, multiple reviews of this and I don't think I saw one person love it. I definitely haven't seen one person use it since like their reviews and like it and use it on a regular basis. This just seems a little bit weird, if I'm honest. It's odd and I feel like they were going for something and it just hasn't quite pulled off. That's how I feel like this blush is. It doesn't quite swatch or look on the cheek as it does in the pan. It appeared to be a little patchy for some people, but ultimately it just doesn't really seem to work on anyone as a blush. Some people may be using it as like a contour type product because it obviously is quite cool toned or neutral toned. It's got this kind of brown, but actually it ends up looking muddy on most people. Is my experience based on the reviews I've seen. So I decided to keep my 30 pounds firmly in my back pocket for another time. Next up, the Pat McGrath Primer. Now this came out quite some time ago, a couple of years I feel, and I strongly remember picking up the foundation, the concealer, and I think the powder all came out at the same time, and then I had a disaster with my order. This was in the days when things came out on Selfridges, like around the same time they came out on Pat McGrath, so I got them from Selfridges and they sent me like the wrong shades and everything was a nightmare. I don't think the primer, I think it was one that I thought, you know, I don't need it. I don't think it's particularly useful to review primers. It's tricky to review primers because it's very hard to see what they do on camera. To, you know, that's kind of something you can see in person and experience in person as you use it over the days and you come to form your decision as whether it's helping your makeup stay on and things. So I didn't pick up the primer for review press purposes, but I had my little eye on it. I thought it was going to be amazing. And I watched review after review after review and everybody basically concluded that it was like the runt of the litter. It was the one product of that whole collection that no one really liked or no one certainly loved. The packaging was just not up to par. I don't understand what happened there. Something slipped through the net with that packaging. Everything else was this stunning, glorious perfume bottle of a foundation. The beautiful, simple, but effective concealer. I guess that actual under eye powder is quite similar to the primer, like it's quite light and plastic. So maybe that's kind of in a similar theme, but the primer really seemed to fall off when it came to packaging. I feel like primer packaging, it needs to be like foundation packaging. Primers are expensive and we want the nice bottles, we do. But I could have forgiven that if it was kind of on a level with the Touch of Silk canvas and it just, it wasn't. Okay, it was just a very average product, very passable, very skippable, very save your money -able. And so I was very, very happy that those reviews came out before I picked it up and that I waited. That's what reviews are here for. Reviews shouldn't be there to like push you into buying something that you don't want or need. Reviews should be there to save you money, honey, or make smart decision or good decisions for you to see if you've got something that looks the same as this already. See if actually it performs really well and is consistent. See what the shades look like on different skin tones and make better decisions. Ultimately, I feel like reviews should save us money and that saved me some money. Next up, a more recent one, and this is the Fenty Resting Peach Face. Now there's very few reviews on this little set on YouTube. The first few reviews I saw were on much deeper skin tones than mine. This is a set with a cream peach blush and one of their cream gloss bombs, a mini version of a, what am I trying to say? A mini cream gloss, what? 
a mini cream lip. <laughs> a mini peach cream gloss is what I'm trying to say to you. You know exactly what I mean. That's the set. So there are a few reviews I saw on Deeper Skin Tones were very helpful, but obviously I needed to see it on someone around my skin tone to see what this would look like on me. I think it's probably m like more suited to fair to medium skin tones from what I've seen, because it's not super pigmented. I don't think those cream blushes generally are, so you need to find one that will work for your skin tone because they aren't super buildable, that they're gonna give you a lot of pigment without quite a lot of work, which for cream product, you don't wanna be whacking a lot on. That could lead to problems. So yeah, I think that's from what I've seen, That would, that's kind of who this is gonna suit the most. I have watched Morgan Turner's review of this, and I just felt like, it's just that I wanted this set for the lip product, okay? The blush was probably gonna sit in a drawer because it's a cream blush, and from what I've seen, not most people's favorite cream blush formula either. So for me, I'm not really gonna get that much use out of that. That was gonna be a bonus if I did like it. I wanted this peach cream lip gloss because I love that formula and I love a peach lip. So who, you know, how can we lose? But it just seems like this one is quite sheer. I wanted it to be a bit richer, have a bit more pigment like the other ones that I have. Are really nicely pigmented, can be worn on their own. This one on me, I think it's just going to wash me out. I think it's too light. I don't think it's pigmented enough. And that was money saved, so thank you, Morgan. Save me 20 bucks, buckaroos. Next up, this Estee Lauder Double Wear Light. I mean, there's been 400 Estee Lauder Double Wear Light or something about light, something to do with a light version of the Double Wear. I feel like we're on our 25th reincarnation of these types of products from Estee Lauder. They keep launching them, then taking some away, then launching a different one, then taking that away, then reformulating that. And I don't know what's happening, but it's very confusing. I wish they'd stop it. This one has not, this most recent version has not launched here yet in the UK. It's taken its sweet time. It's been months, but that does seem to be Estee Lauder. Things do come here to the UK like months after the US generally, very annoying. But in this case, great. Cause if this had come out at the same time, I 100% would have snatched it up. And yes, I would have done a review. So it would have been worth doing to help you guys out matte shades and all of that stuff <laughs> hair on my face but as that was not an option it did not launch here in time it wasn't an option so I watched reviews instead and there's nothing necessarily terrible about this foundation I haven't watched anyone's review where they've been like this is terrible it looks horrendous it aged me it doesn't wear well it's awful but I also haven't really seen anyone love it and let's be real, I have lots of foundations and I have my holy grail foundations that I'm obsessed with and I love. And in no way does this really sound like it's gonna be my type of foundation. And I just think even the people who kind of go for these types of foundations, these lighter coverage foundations, don't love it. And I feel like there are others that are better. So for me, this just looks very average and again, skippable for me. So again, thank you for all those lovely reviews that saved me my money. Next up, the Natasha Denona Bronze Cheek Palette. I don't know what it was about this, because usually these cheek palettes, I snatch them up, they, I get excited about these. I love these from Natasha Denona. I've had great experiences with the products, the ones that I have picked up. So I don't know, I feel like I sensed it. I knew I had some kind of unagi, moment about this one. I just knew it wasn't going to be for me. So I waited for a review, which I think is always sensible. If I'm not gonna review something myself, wait for a review, practice what I preach, see what the real tea is. And ultimately, there are people who like this. I know I've had, when I've said before that I'm not purchasing this, I'm skipping it, I don't want it, it's not for me. I always have a few people in the comments saying, oh, it's great, I love mine, it's my favorite. So I know there are people that like it, but it's they are in the minority, it seems. Most people, most of the reviews I've seen are not favorable, do not like the formula of this one, especially when you compare it to the others. The others are better formula wise. That's the general consensus. But ultimately, I just don't feel like I need this one. I feel like between when I have the tan palette, when I have, you know, her other cheek products, her highlighters, I have lots of her face products already, face palettes that I feel are more for me, more my type of thing. And apparently according to reviews, the formula and the ones that I already have is better. This is definitely one that I just don't need. As much as some people seem to really want me to need it and want me to like it and want me to get it, I'm, I, did, I don't want to. 
Next up, another Fenty product. Fenty are a repeat offender in this video, as is Pat McGrath, actually. You'll find out momentarily. But the Fenty Heat glosses, I was dead set that I was gonna pick up more shades of this. I think I talked about this in a Will I Buy It video and I was like, I know I didn't like the original one. Not that I didn't like it, it just burned me. It burned my lips. It wasn't a pleasant, sen tingly sensation. It was a, a burning fire that didn't really plump my lips. And I found very, very sheer and therefore wasn't really my thing. I think also quite gritty from what I remember. But the new shades, when I saw them coming out and the descriptions and saw the swatches online or the product pictures online, I thought, oh, maybe I'll give these another go because actually the burning, it does fade fairly fast. So I can, I can cope with that, I can move on from that. If the color has more pigment and is a more beautiful looking lip then maybe I can get on board with these new shades. And then I watched some reviews and actually I don't like these colors on. I've watched several on people of a similar skin tone to me and I just think they, again, they're just lacking the pigment and the colors are just a little off. There's not one that I really love actually when I've seen it on people. So that was like a U-turn that I just did. I was like, look, my first experience was not great. These don't look any better to me. What am I even think? What am I doing here? What are we doing? We we don't know. Next up, the Tom Ford Blush Duo. So I picked up one shade of the Blush Duo, and then I wanted to go back for more. So the shade I got, I think, is it Peach Poison? Is that correct? That sounds right. I didn't really expect to like it as much as I did. I really love that Blush Duo. Is beautiful. I love it mixed together. I love the shades on their own. I really enjoy it. So I then went to watch more reviews. What other shades can I pick up? I wanted to choose my next shade. I planned on picking a couple more shades up. When I watched reviews, so one that is especially helpful, two that are especially helpful to me, one was Michelle Wong's and the other was Angela Van Rose. Both of them swatched all of the shades in the blush collection and next to each other, which was really, really helpful. And I think, well, Michelle certainly put them all on her cheeks. So again, it was brilliant, really, really helpful when I was trying to decide what other colors and shades I might want. And yeah. However, when I watch those videos, what I found is they're all very similar. They're all so similar to each other, especially when you see them on the cheeks that I just felt like, oh, there's no others that are different to the one that I have or different enough for me to really bother getting more. Like I have a full draw when it comes to blush, okay? If you wanna get in that club, your name has to be down, you have to be dressed appropriately, you have to have the right shoes on, you can't be wearing sportswear, you've gotta be like top, and you've gotta be making an effort, you've gotta give me something that makes me wanna put you in my top drawer. And for me, I'd rather save a space for someone a little more adding variety in there. I don't know if any of this is making any sense, but they all look too similar is what I was saying. Next up, the other Pat McGrath product that I was put off by reviews from buying that I fully intended probably to buy before the reviews started rolling in. And that's Midnight Sun. And I feel like this palette, lots of people expect me to really want this and to love it. But again, when I look at swatches, so my go-to, like most people, when it comes to Pat McGrath, Kinky Sweat, she always has all the tea. She gets the products early because she's on Pat's PR list. So it gives us the time to make the decisions. She also has an extensive Pat McGrath collection. So she does a lot of comparison swatches. And here's where I made my decision. Because with her comparison swatches and looking at my collection, I, again, I just didn't need it. I didn't need it. It didn't offer me anything I didn't already have from the brand in my collection. And then there's a couple of shades that I just won't use. So therefore I just didn't need it. Again, it just let me know watching that review, looking at the comparisons, watching Alicia do stunning looks with it. I just felt like, do you know what? I have, I can make do with what I've got. I don't need this one. I can skip it. Thank you, Alicia. She saves me money all the time. And she also costs me money. I will, she, you know, she's sneaky. You gotta watch her. Next up, another palette that I talked about in a Will I Buy It video and initially was horrified. Okay, it's Urban Decay's Cyber Palette. If you watch my Will I Buy It video, you'll know that their first, like, first look of that palette, I just was really confused and baffled. 
boggled was my mind. I didn't know what was going on here, what they were going for. It just looked very chalky and weird and strange to me and not my thing at all. I did not understand it. But I did have a slight sneaky feeling that this perhaps will perform differently to how I'm seeing it. I didn't get the vision. I'm not very artistic. I don't, I can't visualise how things will look on the eye just by seeing a palette. So I thought, you know what, they might be onto something here that I don't know about. Maybe they know something that I don't. And I was like, hold my horses, watch the reviews because they, maybe they're, they're doing something. They're doing something. And we just need to see it to make it make sense. But then I watched the reviews and I was like, mm, no, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I was correct the first time. It's very strange and just not for me. And I don't understand it. And it's obviously, it's for someone. It's for someone. That might be you. And I'm so I'm sorry if you feel like I'm bashing your, your treasured favourite. But we're all very, very different. And this is just wildly not for me. It's not my cup of tea. Now, last but not least, because this is an entire brand that I've just fully refused to look at directly in the eye because of the reviews that I've seen and the things that I've seen from this brand has made me just fully close the door on it for like for the foreseeable future. And this is Valentino Beauty. I was suspicious because I didn't rush out. I had a real moment of thinking I when it launched this collection, that initial Valentino collection, I really thought I'm gonna do like a full face of I'm gonna get everything, I'm gonna do a full face. But I just, again, my gut was speaking to me. It was telling me, hold your horses, wait for reviews because something fishy is going on here and I'm not sure what it was, but the review started to come in. My first review that I was like, oh, okay, this has got me now. I'm like the eye of Sauron turned and I, I was looking directly down the neck of Valentino's agenda but this was my friend Tavia on Instagram so this is chic profile official is her account so she got a load of these products she went in store and got them straight away and first of all I'm I think I remember her having like a disastrous experience in store I think I'm remembering that correctly second of all the packaging was cheap and light and faulty in some ways so a lot of these products rattle and these are flipping expensive products, really, really luxury price tag, at least, products. And in photos, it's kind of hard to tell. And I really thought in photos, these could be gorgeous. And if they were super heavy and everything was very polished and beautiful and smooth and prettier even than it looked in the photos in real life, it could be, it could have gone it either way is how I felt but actually now we know which way it went and that is very light very cheaply made very clunky and not a luxurious experience whatsoever when it comes to packaging and that uh, it irks me packaging isn't everything obviously it's the product inside that we actually use and that needs to be top notch to be worth the money but packaging also counts especially if you're going to make products this expensive and slap the Valentino name on it I expect a certain level of luxury experience and it just doesn't seem to exist here I think a lot of the products I've seen are okay they're better than the packaging that seems to be the case but again nothing's wowing me there's nothing quite hitting the mark here, again, a lot of reviews have been like, mm, this is okay, I quite like this. But again, I'm not seeing Valentino making anybody's like holy grails or making anybody's like number one foundation or number one blush or number one anything, in fact. And the packaging makes me just feel a type of way about what they were going for here and whether this was just, oh, let's put out some makeup with a Valentino V on it and make a load of dollars. That's what I feel like happened here and it just leaves a bit of a taste in the mouth it doesn't make me feel like they're doing this right it makes me feel like they're just kind of trying to jump on board the beauty train rather than actually really giving us the good stuff you know so there you have it those are 10 of the products that I was put off from buying 
having watched some reviews, I always think it's so important to watch reviews and to get reviews, multiple people's opinions and experiences that you trust and that you know, and that you know will give you all the information you need to make a sensible good purchase and whether a product is really gonna be for you or not, especially when we can't try a lot of stuff these days. Before we hand over our hard earned pennies and pounds, very rarely pennies, is it? in this beauty world. So please let me know, especially if there's anything that I have put you off buying from my reviews, let us know what you've been put off from buying from review videos, especially here on YouTube. I would love to know. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye.